my name is Jessie Ace. I'm part of a group of enabled warriors that you've probably never heard of. We're fighting back against our invisible illness and taking the dis out of disability. We don't give sympathy to our symptoms. They enable us to be the warrior that we are. If you asked doctors and nurses, they'd say what we're doing is impossible. But pushing the limits of our conditions is something that we have to break through every single day. See, we push the limits. We are mentally strong. And we can do anything. The question is, how far can we push those limits? This podcast will give you the answers. I'm Jessie Ace, and this is the Disabled to Enabled Podcast. warriors on our show today we have an actual legend now in an interview that he did with carol davis don't make that face i saw that (laughs) that he did with carol davis from the daily express she said it best when she described him as being best known for his light-hearted on-air banter with fans and prank calls to unsuspecting pizza vendors now what do you have against pizza vendors i don't know but for this radio on yeah <laughs> For this Radio 1 DJ, there is one subject that is just no laughing matter, and that is multiple sclerosis. Now, his mum, Sandra, was unfortunately diagnosed with primary progressive MS 12 years ago when she was 54 years old. So, Enabled Warriors, please help me in welcoming the amazing, the incredible Mr. Scott Mills, everybody! Oh, I mean, <laughs> as intros go, that was impressive, so thanks very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, Scott, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Are you okay? Awesome. Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. I'm great. Good. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. It's amazing. Not at all. <laughs> so let me get straight in by asking, what was that moment like for you when you found out about your mum's uh, MS diagnosis? I mean, how did she take it? How did you take it? Do you know, in a way, it was, and it feels like a strange thing to say, but it was actually... Mm-hmm. Um, I had all sorts of things going through my head of what it could be. Obviously, my mum was having the uh, MRA scans. And, you know, you always think, well, sometimes you think the worst. So I was thinking, like, you know, brain tumour. Like, all sorts goes through your head. Um, and in a way, when the diagnosis happened and we found out what it was, it was almost like uh, it, was, it was good to, to find out what it was so that we could deal with it. Yeah. rather than you know and not knowing so um, weirdly it was kind of relief to find out and i've spoken mm-hmm. to other people you know who um have done some stuff with ms society and they've kind of said the same thing obviously you don't know uh you don't know what that's going to entail when you first when you first get the diagnosis which can be scary but mm-hmm. in a odd way i was actually quite relieved and i think my mum was too yeah, no, I hear that a lot as well. I mean, um, especially when you are diagnosed quite later on in life, I think that that is more yeah. because you've shown more symptoms for quite some time. And, and yeah, and well, what it was with my mom, and it was kind of like, uh, as you'll know from um, from speaking to other people, it was it it wasn't like uh, it wasn't all of a sudden. I think you can you can just go oh well it's, it's just a thing and you don't even think about it mm-hmm. um, because the symptoms don't come at once and um you know i remember my mum um saying to me there was one time it was years before she got she got finally diagnosed where um she was like i think she was like trying to get a bus and the bus had pulled up and um she tried to run and she was like i can't actually run and mm-hmm it's just a bit of an odd one that because of it like she probably hadn't tried to run for years but then um when she did she was like mm, actually physically impossible so it's like little things like that they just kind of creep up on you you know mm, yeah definitely definitely and it, i do think in a way that it is almost easier if you have had that kind of prolonged time with with loads of symptoms mm. i mean for me i was normal healthy person one minute and then 24 hours later i was suddenly paralyzed down the left side and i was just like what well, <laughs> here's the on? thing the, the, i know it's mm. and, and yeah i mean my my mum uh, it was gradual but then um there was a, a girl that used to work on my show called becky who was so strange was also um while she was on my show about five six years ago diagnosed and she was 30 at the time mm-hmm. but she had a similar experience to what you're saying which was like she went from like fine to like 
strange buzzing feeling yeah and we were actually on the we were actually on radio that morning we were doing the breakfast show on radio one and we were kind of laughing off we were laughing the symptoms off and going well becky's not feeling great today she's got a weird buzzing and we got hundreds of text messages from listeners going might want to get that checked out because it sounds like ms mm. <laughs> and i took her to the doctor that day so it was odd it was, obviously it wasn't an expert diagnosis but the symptoms that we were kind of like making light of on the radio people a lot of people were texting and going go and see a doctor so we actually went that day and yeah. then they booked the the they booked the tests in and um kind of went from there really but she was she was quite ill for, for some time. She's, she's like, I'm pleased to say that she's um, she's doing really well now. Uh, she's got a little baby, and it's just oh. it's just yeah, it's really good. But um, Becky at the time had to leave my show because it just was too much for her. Yeah, yeah, I completely get that. And and the kind of but it was but but compared to my mum, it felt much more sudden. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's very scary when that happens. Very very scary. Really scary. So so what what was it like? I mean, having that diagnosis kind of over the air, and then kind of going, oh oh gosh, like I really was, saw this. I mean, I can still rem <laughs> yeah, I can still remember it to that day because I came in and Becky, because we get there quite early in the morning. The show would start at six thirty. Mm. Uh, I would, as normal, go into the office. And I saw Becky, and she looked a bit upset, and I was like, "You're right." She's like, "Yeah, I just don't know what's happening to me. I feel it feels odd." Mm -hmm. Then, of course, as you do, if you're live on radio, you try and cheer somebody up. And then we were kind of like making light of the symptoms. And that's when all these text messages started to come in. And I, I was like, right, we're going straight after the show. We're going to a doctor. And I'm glad that we did. I'm glad. Um, did. But a, a scary, a really scary time for her. Mm. Very, very scary. And, and having it on live on air probably didn't make it that much easier. I mean, that was, yeah, that was... Uh, but and we the thing is obviously we didn't know that we were no, just kind of like reacting to what was happening that day but it was really weird because it did just unfold on air and mm -hmm. i mean obviously we didn't really go into the we just got a lot of messages going it might be ms and that's not something that we brought to the air at the time because obviously you know even though you are on radio there's an aspect of wanting to if you are not very well, your private life a bit more private that's amazing. And it's, it's amazing to hear that she's got a little baby as well now. Yeah. Because yeah, that's one of the things. Uh, it's are. great. So, um, <laughs> and she's still, um, she's still working a bit. And it's, it's so yeah, it's good. And, um, but initially, yeah. it was a lot to take on because she did, she was quite ill with the symptoms. Mm. Oh gosh. Well, let, let's get back to your mum for for the time being. Um, so, so having this illness, how did it really affect your relationship with her? Do you find that it changed any? Or um, me and my mum have always been super close, um, like my best friend close. So um, we talked about it, and the thing is, it's just uh, it will get you down, but it's just the thing that that gets my mum down the most and she's generally very positive about it yeah. is that in her head she could still be really physical she's like but it's just that the body doesn't work yeah. and I think that's one of the hardest things to come to terms with and generally as I said she has a positive outlook on on it on the whole thing mm. um but uh obviously she has the type of ms that will get worse and, and it has in terms of um uh limiting her physical ab uh, abilities it really has um mm -hmm. I, I mean her walking over the last well it is 12 years as you said the, her walking has got has deteriorated um but you just you just uh make allowances for it like yeah. and you have to think about how you're going to get from a to b in a different way mm. um so for instance my mum will come up and see me in london now so we've, we've got a set plan you see so it's the same routine every time so someone will take her to the station normally or she'll get a taxi she can manage the walk between taxi to station then mm. she'll get to london waterloo and she can just about manage that walk from um train station to a taxi that i've got waiting for her then she'll come and meet me at work and then we'll get a taxi home and that's how it works um i do worry though it is a worry you know um because she can be unst so unstable sometimes um, 
I do worry about that bit where I'm not there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but you've just got to plan it. Like two years ago, we went on holiday. We just went on a, on a holiday to Abu Dhabi, just me and her. And um, we I just hired a wheelchair. We had a great time. Um, and I'd never done so much exercise. I was literally pushing her around. Oh. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, my, yeah, my steps were a lot over that week. But... Um, but you know, we the, you still maintain a quality of life. It's just different, and it really, um, it really does make you realise that if you are physically able, you do really take it for granted as just something that you can do. Yeah. Um, and it's really made me think in a different way about how to get around because we do have to plan it. Mm. you know and for instance my mum loves shopping so she she loves to go to I don't know M&S shopping or whatever that's just not possible on, on her own now so mm. I always make sure that when she's here we jump out to the big shops now is um would be a task for her you know that like, she wouldn't be able to do it yeah yeah no I, I completely get that because I struggle with that as well to be honest you, yeah just like and it's, and, and it's oh, annoying because yeah. you think it's just a trip to the shops. Why can't I do this? And I think that's the most, I think what it is more than anything is frustrating. Mm, definitely. <laughs> it's crazy. It really is. And yeah. um, it's affected by so many things as well. I mean, like, I don't know about, about you, but, uh, but my symptoms have been all over the place since we had that heat wave. It's just like, oh, yeah. you sideways. Like, it's yeah, no, my mum is the same. So I was, mm -hmm. me and my mum had a FaceTime last night. And obviously it was, I mean, last week it was ridiculously hot oh, for anyone. Awesome. But, <laughs> but, if you're, but if you're an MS uh, sufferer, then yeah, she said that she was felt rubbish for about three days. It, it really knocked her. Yeah, yeah. So, and you had the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like tiny fluctuations in, in heat, whether it's heat or if it's it's cold weather. It's just, yeah. it's insane. And yeah, it's just so hard yeah. I, my, my mum struggles with that a lot. And particularly last year when the summer was so long and hot, it wasn't, mm. wasn't great. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so your, your mum now is on uh, an infusion treatment, isn't she, for, for her primary progressive MS. And it mm -hmm. is quite a, a new one that has come to yeah. the market. So how how has she found that? How did you kind of react to that as well? I I think that whatever helps is good mm -hmm. um, because she was getting the MS hug a lot, you know, as well the, the yeah. chest thing, and that's not pleasant for anyone. So, um, however, it's weird because they've. And I don't know what they were called. I'm not an expert in this, but they have tried her on different drugs before and they did not agree with her at all. And it actually mm -hmm. made her feel worse. So I think that if you find something that works for you, and also sometimes the difference can be minimal, you know? So it's actually quite hard to yeah. tell. It's like, is this, is this working or not? Do you know what I mean? But then some days you feel like, okay, I've had a better day today, so maybe it is. But I think it's, it's still, unfortunately, real trial and error. Um, and I know that there are lots of exciting developments being made at the moment, which um, mm. which I'm positive for. But um, but yeah, it's at the moment no one really knows, do they? And it's uh, no. that's the hard bit because it's like sometimes you don't know whether it's psychological or whether you know. I mean, can I say to you that having any medication has made a huge effect? I don't necessarily think so. It, it's hard. If I'm honest. It's so hard. And the thing is with medications, it, it actually only works for about one in 300 people. That's the thing. So That's what they, I, I, I heard that statistic. And, and, uh, right, so it's a bit of a lucky dip, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> and sometimes, like taking the medication actually gives you more side effects than what you would have if you didn't take anything. So well, that's... Know, that's what my that's what my mum experienced. She was just wiped yeah. out by it, and um, but I know that Becky, going back to Becky, has tried some other things, and they she's found that to be beneficial. But often with my mum, the side effects were were worse actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it varies so much as well. It really does. So so you mentioned uh, Becky being on on a treatment, and that's that's really interesting as well because she's just had a baby. 
Um, yes, it would to be fair, it was before the baby, and and I don't know, I don't actually know, we haven't really discussed if and what she was taking during pregnancy. I imagine nothing. <laughs> no, she does seem to be in a, in a better place. Okay. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite often as well that you, you don't take anything. And, no. and the reason that I ask is because, um, you know, and I, I know that there's a lot of young people out there currently, quite, kind of my age, like kind of 28 kind of age, and we're thinking about having kids and it's like yeah. you're on medications and you're kind of like, well, I'm going to have to come off all of these and then I'm going to have to yeah. go back on them. So all the side effects that I had before, I'm going to have that twice as bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, actually, though, it's like it would be maybe in a future episode would be good to speak to Becky because she could literally oh, write a book on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Just yeah. On the show I, I can put you in touch. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, so, OK, so. Going back to you as well, I mean, um, you've told us in many interviews about your own struggles with mental health, um, so yeah. particularly anxiety, uh, which that kind of started when you were around 13, uh, didn't it? So how, how did you manage your anxiety around your mum's MS diagnosis and Becky's diagnosis? And Well, I mean, my mum was the, probably the only person, when because it, it was scary, it was a bit like anything, you're like, what are these weird symptoms that I'm getting? Why don't mm -hmm. I want to be around people? What is it? <laughs> Especially when you're that age. But yeah. my mum was like, literally was my rock. She was the one that was there going, like helping me a lot and just talking to me through it. So when this whole MS thing came up, it was like, right now it's your turn. <laughs> <In that time. laughs> um, <laughs> we really helped each other out. Um, um, but yeah, she was incredible during that time. And you know, like, my sim I don't suffer as much anymore with that. Um, and I honestly think that getting into radio, I was so lucky because it's something that I absolutely loved. Mm. And also, if you are sometimes an anxious person, it's the best job in the world because you are literally speaking, talking to loads of people that are sat in a box on your own. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I actually think it really helped me. And, and having that structure of going to a job every day, I didn't do I didn't do um, college or university because I was lucky enough to get into radio. But mm -hmm. I it was the one thing that I that I wanted to do so much, and you know all, all my family was so supportive. I think if you if you want to do a job like that, especially then, there was a certain element of yeah, but how? Because it's one of those jobs that you don't get. I mean, yeah. it's easier to get into now. Um, yeah, it's, I think if people getting into my industry or any TV, radio, anything like that, I think sometimes it's like, well, how am I going to get in the door? And that's the mm -hmm. only worry that they had. But that's the same as anyone's parents that have a son or daughter where they want to get into a job like that. It's just like, it, it's, it can be... Um, it can be hard to, to get in the door, but, um, yeah. but they were very supportive and um, helped me a lot. And, but also doing the job, I believe, has really helped with, with that. Yeah, definitely. Especially being at Radio 1 because you're on a much more public stage and um, like even doing something like, I, I knew that I wouldn't be any good at it, but because I'm a bit like, take that anxiety, that's why I did Strictly, because <laughs> nothing will be scarier than that. No. Especially if you can't dance and you know that 14 million people are watching. But I did that as a kind oh of, um, I did that as a kind of proving that I can to my anxiety and myself. I love that. That is amazing. If you can do that on television. I mean, if you told me when I was so anxious back then that I would have done a TV show like that, even 10 years ago, I would have been like, no, you haven't. Because it's just, <laughs> I just wouldn't. It's like, yeah. I, but I do like to do things that are slightly out of my comfort now because I can. Yeah. Like my worst thing is heights. So then I decided to take part in an ab sale on live television <laughs> for children in need. Oh, down wow. The, down the, um, what's that big Olympic, the, the building in the Olympic Park, I can't remember what it's called. It's a big red thing anyway. Just decided to abs abseil down that with the added pressure that it was on TV. And you can see my legs like shaking, oh. but I was like, I did it. <laughs> it's true because you, you put yourself under pressure and you, you kind of got out yeah. of your zone and, you know, at the end of the day, but I, you know, and also with exercise, <laughs> I, found, I found exercise to be hugely beneficial as well. Um, yeah, but yeah. once again, yeah. back in the day, even 10 years ago, you wouldn't find me anywhere near a gym or going for a run, no way. No, 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 definitely not. I was the same. So a lot, of, a lot has changed, but um, 
uh, but in a good way. That's amazing. It really is. And just the things that you've done are just absolutely incredible. And I was really, when I was researching you, I was really, really interested to see that um, at, <laughs> during the Edinburgh Fringe in, uh, I think it was 2009, you actually had Scott Mills the musical. Yeah, I mean, we did. <laughs> uh, I've actually still, I'm in my house now, I've actually still got a poster upstairs. Because <laughs> um, we did the poster in the style of Billy Ellie, and I like the jump. Um, obviously, it was hugely <laughs> tongue in cheek. But yeah, we got a chance to do uh, our show from the Edinburgh Fringe, which I, I've not been there for about four or five years now, and I miss it dearly because it's so much fun. I mean, some of the most fun weeks I've had have been working there. And also, like, getting paid to be there to do a show. Anyway, so we thought, what, sh what sh can we do? We'll do the radio show there all week, but what can we do in, in the theatre nearby? Because obviously, that's what Edinburgh is all about, you know, go and see loads of shows. Yeah. So my producer at the time, who was a genius called Emlyn, um, was like, "Let's do," because I don't really like musicals. So uh, I don't get, I don't get it. So he was <laughs> like, "Why don't we do a, a tongue-in-cheek musical about your life? Because why would there ever be one?" <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's when we did Scott Mills the musical, and yeah, it was so fun. Someone actually sent me the video of it the other day on the YouTube, and I was like, "Oh my god, this brings back amazing memories." <laughs> <laughs> it was just silly. Incredible. It was really incredible. I love watching it. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> but who gets to do that kind of thing? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. That's yeah. why I love it. Exactly. So much. <laughs> it's just so great. So, okay, going back to MS and stuff. So what is the one piece of advice that you could pass on someone who is newly diagnosed, probably worrying about how their family members are going to react or maybe they're finding a potential partner? Yeah. Um, how, what, what would you say to them? I, I would say, um, it, of course, it's going to be scary, but I would, from my experience with my mum and also Becky, obviously, two completely different types of MS and two completely different age ranges. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, uh, try not to be scared because it's, it's, it is scary, but I've got to a point now, and so have both of those people, where, yes, it can get you down. But yes, you can also deal with it. Mm -hmm. And it isn't the end of your life. And it's not, you know, it's not, it's not, um, it, it's, it is, of course it's scary, but it's, but you can still have a life. And exactly. it's, you know, it's, 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 it's like, a, it, it, you, I think, you, I think the initial thing is like, well, I'm not going to be able to do anything. And that's yeah. just not true. No, no, it's, I completely agree with you. When I was diagnosed at 22, I was just like, came completely out of the blue and like all of the, the I mean, my doctor in, in the hospital when he told me I had MS, literally told me to go away and Google it to find out more about it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And I, I just thought that was a normal thing at the time, but whoever I told that to is kind of like, what? <laughs> So, so yeah, so I... A doctor tells us is not the best, yeah. No, I obviously found every negative story that you could possibly yeah. find on MS and... Uh, of course. Yeah. I mean, they, they always say that, don't they, with everything. It's like the worst thing you could possibly do is Google. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I do believe that. Um, don't do it. But, yeah, don't do it. Um, but, yeah, I also, do you know, like, in the, even in the time that my mum's been diagnosed... Um, so there is much more awareness. There's much more um, help, I think, than mm -hmm. there was. I mean, it, but it was the same. Like me and my, my mum, once we got the diagnosis, we're like, "Well, what's all that then?" And we had to literally sit down and work out what it actually was because yeah. we didn't really know. No, no, exactly, exactly. And it's 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 thanks to people like you who have that social platform who can really go out and actually talk about it and just raise that awareness. It's just yeah. it's so commendable. I just. And also, since I've started doing that, which has been a few years now, I've mm -hmm. had people who are 19, 20 going, thanks so much, because no one's talked about it. it like, maybe if it's, it could be someone that maybe listens to my show on a regular basis, and yeah. it's just someone breaking it down and not talking about it in a medical way so much. Yes, exactly. It, it, it's, more, it's, more, it's more, how do you feel? What's going to happen to me? But that, rather than let me bamboozle you with some science, which yeah. I don't really understand. I just, think, I, I just think with anything like this, the same with mental health, which is happening now, mm. we just have to be able to talk about it honestly and normally. Yeah, exactly. And really openly as well. I mean, it's, and openly. it's much more of a, an accepted thing nowadays to discuss mental health, which is yeah. amazing. 
Absolutely. I, I mean, this. I think there's still a way, a bit of a way to go. But yeah. I think that if you even think back ten years ago, it wasn't like this. No, no, exactly. And hopefully, in ten years' time, we can kind of get right. the stigma that's around. And that's, that's the aim. <laughs> because there's so much, um, there's so much prejudice as well going on, and so much discrimination, especially when if for people like me who use a disabled badge sometimes. The amount of abuse that I sometimes get for using that disabled badge is just not worth it. It's shocking. And that's- the Is that because, that and I'll, I'll tell you why I think it is, but then you tell me. Is that because it's not immediately visible? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Looking at me, I look like a completely normal person. Well, I, I and also, happened. I mean, obviously with my mum, you could really tell. But mm -hmm. this is what happened with, um, with, Becky, and I hope she won't mind me saying this, but like, you get the thing of like, you're drunk. It's like, no, I'm not. Yeah. Um, and she had that a bit as well. And it's because mm -hmm. I've heard this a lot because it's like one day you can be absolutely fine. The next day you'll be slurring all over the place and yeah. like the walking <laughs> is bad. And, and so I, I get it. I've, I've heard that. And also it can be, as you know, sometimes no two days are the same. No, exactly, exactly. I mean, I've, I'm confusing everybody on my social media at the minute because I've been doing this running challenge in July. So I've run 50 wow. miles in July, which like, two months ago, I didn't run at all. So this is like, what? That's big, yeah. So yeah, and I've, I've run so far 47 and a half miles. So I've got to do like three and a half miles before tomorrow. And people don't understand on my social media that I can run, but then the next day I don't do anything. <laughs> do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. I don't but but this, goes, this goes back to what I was saying before a little bit. It's, you have to plan everything. Oh, because totally. You can't, yeah. Because you can't plan for what you might feel like tomorrow. Yeah. But pretty much chances are you're pre-wiped. <laughs> so exactly. that's amazing, by the way. I, yeah, I really you. love hearing about things like that because it's like, <laughs> just from having it in my life some days you just like can't move so um <laughs> you know so I, I no um yeah no I honestly think that's amazing that you can do that oh thank you because I know the constraints that can that happen yeah especially with the heat as well it's been an absolute nightmare uh, <laughs> yeah I mean fair play for you doing it in the summer as well <laughs> You know, it was one of those... What were you thinking? Well, it seemed a good idea at the time, and then I was, like, really hating it. <laughs> no, but it is great. It's a, it's yeah, a, a, but it's that, it's that thing that I was saying of, like, proving to you that you can do it. Exactly, exactly. And I learned that, you know, it's the physical limitations that I thought I had, actually, sometimes it is a mental barrier. Yes. And that's, that's a really, really important lesson that I've learned, I think, this month, so... But how great to be able to prove to you and to your MS that that's that, that you that you can do that. I think it's yeah, I think absolutely. it's great. Also, really mentally helps you. It's like oh, I won't be able to do that because your brain goes through all sorts of things that you won't be able to do rather than what you yeah. can do. Yeah, it but does. that's the but that's the natural reaction to anything like this. You'll be like, well, what am I not what am I not going to be able to do? Yeah, and it's like you do see you see a lot of. You know, people doing amazing things with MS, and um, and that yeah, that just definitely needs to continue. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the other people that I've had on this podcast are MSs that have run marathons, they've climbed, yeah, it's mad. They've started businesses, and it's just incredible. And the thing is, yeah. if you tell yourself repeatedly that you can't do something, you will get worse. That's the thing. I agree, and it's just like what my mum has done very well with this is keep it pretty upbeat most of the yeah. time. Love that. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get on to some super quick secrets? Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Enabled Warriors, this is the part of the show where we find out a little bit more about the personality of our guest with some super quick secrets. Are you ready, Scott? I am so ready. <laughs> Amazing. What is the most inspiring book that you've ever read? Oh. This is oh. where you say, I don't read books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't really read books. Um, oh. I love an autobiography. Um, no, I'm really bad at this, and I'll tell you why. Because I have to, for my job, I have to soak up so much pop culture, I yeah. can't take anything else in sometimes. But okay. I can tell you who won Love Island. Okay. I don't watch Love Island, but okay. <laughs> no. I just have to be across all that. So, do, do you know, one of my things, my, one of my resolutions this year was read more books. Hasn't happened yet, but I will. So, ask me in a year's time, and I'll give you a list. 
Amazing. Okay. <sighs> Don't read books. We lie. Oh, no. We lie. Okay, fine. Let's get on to the next question. What is the weirdest thing that you've ever done? Oh my god. <laughs> a musical about myself. <laughs> Went to live with David Hasselhoff for a week in his house and got filmed on TV. Wow. Um, being a crab on Strictly Come Dancing. I mean, where's it, and there's, I mean, there's, there's plenty. If you look back, there's a lot. That's just, there's just three for you there. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. That's, that's, I mean, I feel like we need to go into those because. <laughs> I've got, I've, I've, I have an odd life. <laughs> Doesn't that make it so much interesting? So much more interesting? It makes it really interesting. Um, um no I, I i wouldn't change it for the world but like sometimes you know like you'll get home after a week and uh you call a friend or whatever and they'll be like what have you done this week it's like well i just did a parachute with mariah carey what did you do I just went to work and i haven't done a parachute with mariah carey by the way but it's that kind of thing where people go okay cool that's normal yeah. it's not what is your favorite place that you've ever visited that i've ever visited i would say um I love Thailand, you know, I love the food, Ooh. I love the people, so you just go to Thailand and you're in a happy place, because, well they call it the land of smiles, and when you go there it's really true, and it's like some people there really don't have much, but yeah. they, they love life, and I like that a lot. Um, Amazing. And the food. <laughs> but no, I've heard a good lot place. of good things about the food there. <laughs> it's a good place to go, it's just a great place for holiday. Oh, amazing. I'd love to go there, do anything. Mm. Okay, what is the scariest thing that you've ever done? Uh, strictly. And <laughs> the ab sale, actually. I wouldn't do anything like that again. Really? I mean, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. I, I, I was so terrified. Like, but we raised a fair bit for children in need. Uh, and, um, but yeah, I was having training. Like, I've never done anything like that. So the Royal Marines trained me. Oh, wow. I know. <laughs> Like another weird thing. Um, Incredible. But then what we did was there's an old disused fire station <clears throat> in like Waterloo area of London. And what is clever what they do, because obviously you're in a harness and you've just got to face the fear of let go. <sighs> and it's like, okay, but that's me just attached to a rope. In my head, that's not okay. <laughs> um, but what they do, it's quite clever. They start you, they start you like, like here's the ground and they start you about there. So it's really, really like, it's five feet. And it's like, and then you go up to the next level and then you try the next level and then you try the next level. And it's, I mean, it wasn't my favorite thing though, but no. I did it. Oh my God, that, that's just incredible. So incredible, well done for that. Thanks. I just don't think I would be able to, I'll be honest. <laughs> I know, but it's one of those things where you signed up for it. It's like, well, I've got to go through with it now. Yeah. And it's just uh, hard when it's live on TV. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So, so where can other warriors find out more about you and what you do? Okay, we well, listen to my radio show every day, which is uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, that's one to four p.m. on Radio One, and then I reveal the chart show every week on Radio One um, Fridays, four till seven. Amazing, amazing. Thanks so, so much for that. And thank you so much for coming on the show today, Scott. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it, you know. Thank you. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Remember, warriors, stay enabled. So thanks, Scott. Thank if you want to fight back against your invisible illness and help take the diss out of disability, then join the tribe on Facebook, facebook.com slash enabledwarriors. If you love this podcast, click that subscribe button and never miss another episode. And remember, warriors, stay enabled.